is Mike. And Beck. And Nina. And we are Brew Crime. For this episode, we are going to do the theme, Dismemberment. Hopefully you enjoy this. This one's going to be a little darker, I think, than the last few we've done. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to start with uh, Nina. Cool. Okay, so... A little little hint of what's to come here. Little hint. Um, So... (laughs) I've honestly had a little bit of trouble finding just dismemberment and not people who dismembered to cannibalize. Um, So across my searching, I came across Baba Yaga. Uh, That was one of her nicknames. So I'm going to just explain what Baba Yaga means. It's a famous witch of the East, well known in Russia. She has spooked and scared little children across Eastern Europe for many centuries. The name of Baba Yaga is composed of two elements, Baba meaning grandmother or old woman in most Slavic languages. The other names she's received was the Granny Ripper, and my personal favorite nickname of all time, I think, is <laughs> Granny Ball Lecter. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's awesome! Okay, so all what right. uh, what beer are we pairing this with today? This uh, this killer is from uh, Russia, right? Soviet Russia from so, St. Petersburg. So we're gonna tie it in with the Boris Russian Imperial Stout from Strange Fellows Brewing. It's a nice light, ten point three percent alcohol. Swift and Silent Owl glides through the dark, his screech believed to portend death and misfortune. Some revere him as a messenger of the spirit world, an oracle of secret knowledge inspired by Owl's omnipotence. This barrel-aged stout penetrates the inky depths of the soul, illuminating unseen truths. Actually, that kind of ties in a little bit in mm-hmm. some ways. So the beer is uh, really black. and It's got a nice like chocolate-colored brown head. Got a bit of hints of wood and bourbon in there, some chocolate, toffee, kind of sweet. What do you think? I already tasted it. I don't want to taint your uh, impression of it. No, I... no, I've had it before. Oh, well, screw you. <laughs> I, I haven't. It's about 30 shades darker than I would pick. It's, not, it's definitely got some bourbony vanilla and oak in there and a little bit of roast, some caramel. I don't know what to say. I like it. Maybe a hint Smoky. of anise, a bit of smoke, yeah. It's really nice and it's quite complex, like I'm sure your killer is. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think this one's just like out to lunch. I don't know that she's like that complex. I just don't think she's really, you know, a thing, a person. Anyways, okay, well, let's get into it. On July 26, 2015, dogs sniffed out the remains of 79-year-old Valentina Yulanova at an apartment building in the suburbs of St. Petersburg, Russia. Her body had been decapitated and spread out across seven different garbage bags. Ooh. CCTV and blood trails on the floor of the apartment building led police to the door of 68-year-old Tamara Samsonova, who had been working as a caregiver for Miss Yulanova. Samsonova confessed that they got into an argument around dirty dishes, where Valentina had... (laughs) (laughs) I'm not doing the fucking dishes. (laughs) It's literally your job. It's It's uh, literally As my caregiver, it is literally... (laughs) Right. Well, that argument didn't turn out so good for uh, Yulanova. Valentina Yulanova had told her that she's tired of Samsonova, and Samsonova was really afraid to go back on living on her own. So she panicked and killed her. (laughs) I don't want to be alone, so I'm going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she she did admit that killing Yulanova was good for her because then she would have the home for about another five months until her relatives either turned up or someone else. Hmm. The way that she killed her is Samsonova opened a bottle of sleeping pills and put all 50 pills into Miss Yulanova's salad. She liked the salad very much, apparently, which is what she told the police shortly after um, Yulanova collapsed on the floor, and that's where she was cut up. She was still alive while she was cut up, but just unconscious. Jesus. Um, how did she not taste that? Uh, maybe it was ground up and put in the dressing or something? It was with a vinaigrette or something, yeah, in the oh, salad. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, nice the, those, those salads get you. I guess. <laughs> Salads are terrible for you. Eat, eat. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you do both, though? Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Last bad experience I had with a salad was what uh, July last year when I was using a mandolin and I cut half my pinky oh my off. Oh my god! <laughs> so seven stitches later, yeah, you I don't know. What? Salads and me are I not. I forgot about that. You didn't even need sleeping pills to do it. <laughs> no, I needed about like seven beers and texting in one hand and a mandolin. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Okay, we'll get back to this. Mm-hmm. Um, so she put the body in various bags and she put the head in a saucepan. Oh, um, the no. saucepan or the head still haven't been recovered. And Samsonova isn't telling anyone where it is either. She kind of thinks it's a bit of a game. Yeah. Sounds like she made soup. Yeah, it, get, <laughs> it kind of gets there. We haven't talked about her favorite body part yet oh, that okay. she may or may not have liked eating. When the police arrived at the apartment of Tamara, she immediately confessed to killing Miss Ulanova as well as three other people. She was detained as the police searched her home and found bizarre diaries written in German, English, and Russian. 
In some instances, she wrote the same entry more than once, but in each language. Hey, that's nice, you know, translate for someone who doesn't speak that language. Mm-hmm. But I think it's really bizarre to have like one journal entry and then just repeat the exact same thing verbatim in a different language. It's clearly something's going on upstairs. Well, it's good for those podcasters later. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to get a little bit of excerpts from the diary, but because the case is still ongoing, the full details of the diary have not been released yet. Uh. I do have a picture uh, to share, which I'll send, to, I'll send to you, Mike, just yeah. so that you can add it in, of what one of the entries looked like. There was also another entry released, uh, which shows a glimpse of her kind of daily journal. And I'm going to quote her. I killed my tenant, Voldoya, cut him into pieces in the bathroom with a knife, put the pieces of his body in plastic bags, and threw them away in different parts of Frushensky district. This entry does lead to a discarded torso and other body parts found a few years back, which had not been identified. But from Samsonova's diary, she mentions a tattoo on the body of Voldoya, which matches a tattoo description on the torso that was found. Now let's go a little bit and talk about who Tamara Samsonova is. So she was given the name the Granny Ripper, and by far still my favorite is Granable Lecter. Yeah, I love that one. Mm-hmm. It's great. Altogether, she's dismembered and beheaded 11 victims. The elderly woman began killing when she was 48 and didn't stop until she was caught in 2015 at the age of 68. Wait she a had a caregiver at 68? She, she was, was the, care- the caregiver. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. As she killed, she wrote the details of each murder down in a diary. Police say they have evidence linking the suspect to at least 11 deaths. Police have not revealed evidence to directly support allegations of cannibalism, but they said she kept a detailed diary of her crimes. The diary has reference to cannibalism and the occult that have prompted police to investigate um, these possible motives. Something curious noted in the diaries was that she also always removed the lungs, which led many people to think that she was eating them. So from all the different torsos that they were finding around the time that they may or may not have linked to her, lungs were always missing. Which is creepy. That's like a signature to me. Of yeah. Serious. Yeah. I don't and know why you want would, the lungs, Yeah, I don't but... know why you would want that. Yeah. I mean, I've never tried it. lungs. I don't mean human lungs. I mean anything I know. <laughs> you haven't had human lungs, really? <laughs> There's a restaurant well, in Kingsway. No, I just have <laughs> mine. Just mine. <laughs> yeah. But like, I know you can eat basically anything from animals. Right. But don't. Cause, well, depending yeah. on the animal. <laughs> well, I yeah. guess I just, yeah. I just kind of went to my Dahmer knowledge and I'm like, the cheek is the best part or the butt oh, cheek, yeah. like the most fat and meat and she's eating <laughs> right. the lungs. Unless it's tattooed. Apparently that makes it taste bad. So right. get full body tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> Getting yeah. there. Yes. Five. Okay. We're good. Aww. Uh, <laughs> um, there's also a couple notes actually in her diaries that she admires Russian cannibal murderer Andrei Chikatilo who killed at least 52 people between 1978 and 1990. Chikatilo is super badass. Um, yeah. There's a s- documentary on, um, the I think, Russia's toughest prisons or t- r- toughest criminals oh, yeah, yeah. or something, and he's on that. that. Crazy. I've heard a lot of podcasts about him, yeah. Yeah, and uh, this was one of the people she looked up to. So I, considering that he was a cannibal, I think it was fair to assume that she also uh, munched on people. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Uh, some Sonova's suspected victims included other neighbors, former tenants, her mother, and even oh. her husband. Uh, she actually reported her husband missing in 2005. Yeah, she probably ate him or cooked him or who knows. Uh, no bodies have been found, making it really difficult to convict her. The police have multiple confessions, but they're questioning her sanity. So it's kind mm-hmm. of hard to see like, okay, well, she's saying she did this, did that, did this, and from her diaries, but how do you really know when they don't have all the bodies? She um, hate them. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, and I... But uh, bones, right? There's still... There'd you, still be so much You left. boil them in the pot, you make your stock, <laughs> you turf <laughs> them. You can do, use it all. I mean, I'll, I have a couple photos of her as well. Like, you know, she was really lean too, so like, I, I just can't see her eaten this much I, I don't know i mean i'm not sure how many calories are in lungs um <laughs> i'm gonna I'm, it. I'm gonna move on on that and we never ate again <laughs> it never ate meat again that's what's gonna happen after uh, yeah. uh, maybe <laughs> oh. um, anyone up for barbecue <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go get some steaks. Yeah. One of um Rump roast. <laughs> <laughs> Rump. Oh my goodness. One of the places that they think that Samsonova had hid a lot of the bodies was just outside of the um flats where she had lived, but that entire zone has been remodeled and rebuilt, so they're not sure and they obviously can't go out digging up an entire building. Mm-hmm. When Samsonova was arrested, I have a couple quotes from her. And this, I think, kind of just shows you a little glimpse of where she's at mentally. I have nowhere else to live. I'm a very old person, and I put the whole matter to rest deliberately. 
I have thought 77 times about it and then decided that I must be in prison. I will die there and the state will probably bury me. I'm haunted by a maniac upstairs who forced me to kill. 77 times, is that what you said? Yep. No <laughs> idea of what that reference to. Maybe 77 people that she's killed or eaten, pairs of lungs. I don't know. But 77, just random. She's talking. It is, yeah. I mean, you'd think it would it'd have to be 77 people, I guess, because that's an odd number. Mm-hmm. You're not going to waste a lung. No, and super strange. At her first court appearance, Samsonova blew kisses at reporters and played peekaboo. She told the judge... <laughs> Yeah. Going for the insanity plea, are you? <laughs> yeah, there's pictures and I have one that I'll share that we can um, share for, with everyone. But she's, yeah, blowing kisses to the reporters. She's just, I, I think, completely delusional in what's going on. When the judge had questioned her if she should be remanded just in jail while her trial is going on, this is what she had kind of responded with. I'm guilty and I deserve punishment. I've been preparing for this trial for 10 years. It is all deliberate. We have to take that with a grain of salt, though, too. She does have a history of mental illness, and she was hospitalized three times before that. Hmm. But of course, the judge agreed with her and remanded her to stay in jail, where she just started applauding and clapping her hands, saying, like, good call. Well, I think you should go in prison anyways. You've done some heinous things. But I think I think it's maybe the shock of it's a 68-year-old little lady, right? It's, yeah. it's a lot to take in. There were some reports also about her neighbors, who seemed not that shocked, but kind of surprised which i'm just like what do you what do you mean you're kind of surprised like you know bubba over there but one of the quotes from natalia uh, said that tamara is a very strange woman tricky and very suspicious she had actually confronted her about one of her friends that was missing and tamara said please don't call the police and she actually tried to lure this woman into her house and the police were like you definitely escaped becoming possibly another victim but she didn't call the police nope I think if someone was like, please don't call the police, I'd be like, okay, I won't. And then I'd go call the police. As you're dialing 911 in exactly. your pocket. Oh, this is probably older than that. But I don't know. This is pretty recent, 2015. right? 2015. Yeah, 2015. So yeah, dialing 911 in your pocket. Actually, old cell phones, if you jammed all your keys at once, it would call 911. Yeah, my mom has definitely done that twice. Yeah, I definitely had, uh, I don't know, I don't remember who it was when I was going to uh, university. But one of the people at my table had done that by accident. Mm-hmm. It was just in their pocket and their pants were too tight. Yeah. And police showed up. <laughs> yeah. My mom was working and by herself. And then she heard this voice being like, are you okay? Do you need help? Like really quiet. And she's like, where's that coming from? And she realized it was coming from her pocket. And she's like, hello? <laughs> and it was a 911 operator. <laughs> and she was so embarrassed. Which I mean, it's, it's a great thing that, you know, if someone stalking you or whatever you could just put your hand in your pocket and jam the keys mm-hmm. but it obviously was a pain in the butt with lots of uh, false calls because they got rid of it yeah um we had a super embarrassing story happen that i'd love to share <laughs> um we had a a, a panic alarm right yep. my mom and i were leaving her house middle of the day to <laughs> go to mcdonald's and um we're coming back and our entire house was surrounded by police officers, police oh cars, God. VPD. My mom and I are just like casually with the Jeep, like rolling up with Big Macs. <laughs> like, well, what's going on? Like all the guns were pointed at a door. I guess the way that uh, I think it's Brink Security. I'm not sure. They set it up that it's a hostage silent alarm. So they didn't trigger properly. So they thought we were hostage in our apartments. My mom's like, no, it's us. We're fine. Mm-hmm. We had to walk the police. I'm a hostage to my Mick craving. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> hostage to fast food. Yeah. The, no, <laughs> like the, most of us. The police officer is not impressed. So there's no. at least like eight or nine squad cars. They actually walked into the house with us to make sure that it was all okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, because it's no, a panic yeah, alarm. Yeah. It's a hostage yeah. situation. I'm just totally. like, yeah, no, no, it's fine. You guys go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my mom was, I guess, trying to turn it on, but she accidentally hit the panic alarm. Shit. I know McDonald's was cold by the time we got inside. I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. That's um, what's important. Here. It was bad. No, and the police officers too said that we have to give a call to the company to change that because mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a serious thing. And I don't know how many resources they wasted waiting for us to get back with our McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> to just be like, it's fine. No one's answering the door because we're not here. Oh, my God. But no one broke into your house. <laughs> it was the safest house at, at that particular yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, segue back to this this crazy lady. Essentially, the police, what they're doing now, because it is still an ongoing um, investigation, they're scouring records of unsolved deaths just to see how many she could have killed and how many match with her diaries. Mm -hmm. Um, And from what I saw as well, they'll be releasing more information that's what's actually in the diaries once this trial is completed and then once they have more linked. But it looks like so far she's going on trial for just the one of the ladies that she was a caregiver to, and they have another 10 that looks like for Possible. sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, the guy, the one guy is a for sure as well with the tattoos and the torso. Oh, that right, was, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And I have a couple of uh, gory pictures, which, which we can also put because they took, of course, as Russians do, because nothing is out of <laughs> bounds. Uh, they actually have pictures of the torsos in the garbage bags. So I'll send those. We can see what is... Um, uh, okay for our audience to see. <laughs> and I can always set it up that they have to click a link to bring the picture up okay. instead yeah. of just having the pictures right up front. So if they don't want to see them, they don't have to. Mm-hmm. I, I wish I would have seen that last night when I was Googling oh, by myself in bed you and YouTube at. videos. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I creeped myself out that I just went to sleep last night. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Yeah, no. But um, I think we've all been there. Yeah. Um, probably watching something you shouldn't at bedtime. No, and um, for those, I mean, that do want to YouTube uh, Baba Yaga and look her up, I would highly suggest to look at the Grandma Ripper or try the Granny Ball Lecter. Because if you search Baba Yaga, there's also a five-man dance group that competed on, like, (laughs) Britain's Got Talent or something. Nice. Something random. And I was just like, oh, this is kind of weird. I was like, hmm. And then, like, three links down, I'm like, oh, and now here's my crazy Tamara. I looked her up when we were trying to pair a beer for it, but I didn't want to read too much because mm. I, I don't want to spoil it for myself. But I had no idea it was so recent because the picture it showed, I would say it looked like it was from the 70s. Yep. It was a black and white photo, um, yeah, no, which I know they had color photos. Don't like yeah. yip Here. at me. I'm okay. not a fool. Oh, yeah. I have a journal entry. Oh, dear. And that's one of the torso is found yeah it's pretty gross yeah yeah it's a thing hmm. <laughs> um but yeah don't don't youtube at home in the dark by yourself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the best time debatable but yeah essentially she's being uh, detained at a prison hospital right now in the psychiatric 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 <laughs> okay you guys high five for that one but yeah essentially that's pretty much it so just more details to come but yeah 11 people Wow. That's pretty messed up. Yep. She's out to lunch. <laughs> she definitely is. Ew. <laughs> I guess not anymore. At least she had no family because I saw some cases where like when cannibalism was suspected that they were feeding also people. Oh too. my God. I hate that's, S- that. Mi- I mean, cannibalism, horrible. But when they're feeding it to people who don't know. So, I mean, at least she's she grown. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> free range. <Yeah>. Human. <laughs> it's organic. It's a, Local organic free range. Butchered it myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, at least she had no family members. Well, I mean, she uh, had a her husband, husband yeah. and her mom that she... Okay. Yeah. Okay. No children, at least. No children. There's... Small. Small things. Yeah. Okay, but that's what, that's what I got. Mm. All right. That was pretty messed up. Yeah. All right, okay. well, let's get into the next case here, next story. Mm-hmm. So, Beck, what do you got for us? I can beat you with no hands. This is the story of Mary Vincent kicking ass. A 15-year-old girl on her way to see her grandfather hitches a ride from the wrong person. Her life would never be the same. All right. So the beer we've paired with this uh, story is from Driftwood Brewing out of Victoria, B.C. It's Limb from Limb Rye P.A., it says it's born of Canadian malted rye and lumberjack hops. Limb from Limb Rye PA blends warming malt notes with the melon, clove, and allspice profile of the distinct BC-grown hop variety. Actually, I'll mention lumberjack hops are uh, the first BC-branded hops out there. So these have been developed here in BC. Um, this bottle is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I this, love so this is that. a beer that was actually recommended by our fan friend, Hillary, who is actually a friend of mine that I used to work with and a friend of Mike's through the beer community. And yeah. I used to work with her as well. Yeah. Technically. Yes. Sorry. I think because you came downstairs at work after she had already left. But yeah. I'd like to point out, I love the label on this beer because it's like a lumberjack trying to cut limbs off of some kind of crazy tree monster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know it doesn't tie really into this story, but it, the label He's is just He's cutting the limbs off the trees. Yeah, mm-hmm. but look at the tree. It looks angry. It's like the Whomping Willow. Oh, yes. Yeah. Harry Potter. All right, well, let's uh, move from Whomping Willows then. The beer has got kind of a, what would you say on that? Is it sort of an orangey amber color? Yeah, that's fair. Sort of Peachy a... Peachy amber. Peachy. I like tannish it. Tannish head. It's definitely got some like rye spice in the nose, and it's got lots of that melon and clove and, like I said, allspice, 
just kind of that spiciness. From the smell, I'm worried it's going to be really hoppy, which I, is not my favorite. I really like this beer. Oh my god! Yeah, and it, it, I it's can definitely going to, drink it this is, beer. It's a rye IPA. It's a rye PA. A rye PA. It's yeah. delicious. Yeah, it's right? got it lots smells of smells hoppy, lots of rye notes but and like really rye good. bread notes in the the first bit of the flavor, and then lots of like melon notes and other fruit notes, and it's got sort of those different spice notes that you'd expect. Hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. It's not super bitter, though. It's mm-hmm. got kind of an English IPA bitterness to it. So the IBUs are probably pretty low. Mm. It doesn't say here. Actually, I should mention it's 7% alcohol. Usually, um, the beers that are really hoppy, not a fan, which is fine when I, if I get a tasting flight or something and I get one of those, I just give it to Stephanie because yeah. she loves it. The more, The more, the better? The better, yeah. So you would classify this one as hoppy? No, I need to. I need to it it well, smells no, like it, it is hoppy. It's it just smells not like bitter. it's going to be. Because saying hoppy doesn't it? just mean bitter. The problem is people have, as soon as they hear it's hoppy, they think it's going to be really bitter. Mm-hmm. Hoppy just means there's a shit ton of hops. So it could be aroma mm-hmm. like fruits. It could be aromas like pine. It could I be don't like flavors of bitterness. Flavor. It could be flavors of fruit. Hoppy is just, just a fuck ton uh, of hops in there. <laughs> nice. The first few times I heard the She's word. a lady. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder why. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Dating apps. Um, this every, every sip I have, it has a little more of a sort of a resiny pine in the end of it. Really? I'm not sure what the flavor is that I'm tasting. I'm like, what I is just that? like the flavor. But the, yeah, that's good. I'm glad that you like it. I know. I might. It's a, a little more on the bottle there. You, yeah, to have it. Mm. Look at me adulting. <laughs> Yay, my it's palate not is... a lager. It's growing. My... Or not a yellow fizzy lager, yeah. yeah. My, yeah. my palate, guys, it's so good. Plus one palate. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, first this few times cool. I heard the word hoppy, I thought they were saying happy. I'm like, what the fuck is happy beer? <laughs> I mean, beer makes me <laughs> happy, beer, but yeah, I don't no. know. All beer. <laughs> All beer that doesn't happy taste beer. gross is happy beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All anyway, right. thanks for the recommendation, Hillary. All three of us love it. Yep. That doesn't always happen. So, yeah. It's usually, Way to go. at most, two of three love it. Yeah. As they look at me. <laughs> no. There's definitely ones we've had where I'm like, no, Mike, you need to have this because I don't want it. And, yeah. <laughs> so, here we go into my story. Mary Vincent was born May 17th, 1963, and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Her mother, Lucy, was a casino dealer, and her father, Herb, repaired gambling machines. Um, Sounds like the perfect uh, Vegas couple. Yeah, Isn't what right? stays in Vegas? What happens, what happens Vegas stays in Vegas? Right That's only for tourists, though, right? Oh, okay. Well, okay, the, the crimes, to be fair, didn't happen in Vegas. Okay. Uh, That's okay. why we I'll, I'll allow it. She was okay. I'll allow it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I will continue talking then, but only because you said I could. <laughs> I'm going to just drink beer. Okay, cool. <laughs> she bristled against her strict upbringing. She often cut class, wore makeup, and had run away from home more than once. So I actually thought this was kind of funny because this was in the 60s, and it's just like her uh, lashing out against her strict upbringing is wearing makeup when she's 15. The horror. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, you're cutting class? Well, you're you're 15. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll still be mad if my daughter does it, but... I mean, she's going to, like, she wants to wear makeup now. So what am I going to do about it? You'll be mad, but at the same time, you'll be like, I remember that. (laughs) Well, no, I I didn't do that. You know what I mean, right? It's just one of those things. Kids rebel. (laughs) Yeah. And that's not much of a rebellion. (laughs) Yeah. Or some kids don't rebel at all, and then they go to college and come out and get a mohawk. Or turn into a Dahmer or a serial killer. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Thanks for comparing me to a serial killer, but whatever. (laughs) <laughs> Back to this. <laughs> oh, the spears. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Uh, very limmy. Very hoppy. Okay. Mary spent a uh, part of the summer of 1978 in Sausalito, California, where she lived with her boyfriend in his car. Okay. Now, unacceptable. Anyway. Hey, rent's a lot cheaper if you have a car. What kind of car was it? I don't know. Because I, I mean, if it's a van, then it's like next level. Okay, she was 15. She's wearing true. makeup, though, at that age. Okay, oh, she's asked. well, I mean, yeah. God. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, oh. true, true, um, true. Okay, but you think it's funny until I say this next sentence. Mary lived with him in the car until he was arrested for allegedly raping a high school girl. Uh, yeah, 
But wasn't she in high school? Right? Okay. So but I read still. that, and he was arrested for allegedly raping a high school girl, but she's in high school. He's 18. That's statutory rape. What was Depending the, on what the, was the age of consent state, then? Because yeah. it used to be 12, right? Back in the day? It just right. got moved to 16. Mm-hmm. So, so maybe she's kind of old. And not every country has that thing where if you're over the age of majority, it's mm-hmm. move back two years or whatever. Right. So to be completely honest, my intention was to look at what the laws were in Vegas and California, mm-hmm. or, or rather in Nevada and California, because it's state by state. And I forgot until just now. So sorry about it. I'll, just, to look it I'll, up, I'll do a light Google. The age of consent in Nevada is 16. But what was it in 1978? Age of consent in Nevada. In 1978. 16. Okay. And so. And California was the other one? Mm hmm. Oh, actually, 18. Wow. So there you go. She was only 15 at the time. Yeah. So unless we're assuming that they weren't having sex at all, but were living together in his car, that's statutory rape. Yeah, you'd think so. At the very least. Yeah. But Uh, I guess there is a difference between statutory rape and violent rape. Yes, absolutely. Both of them are bad, but there is a difference there. So I think what they're saying here, if they're saying that he raped a high school student what they're I'm meaning more of non-consensual. A non-consensual. Even if it's consensual and statutory, that's still not as awful for the most, depending on the ages and stuff. Because at least there's consent. At least there's consent. Even though they shouldn't involved. be able to give consent. No. If there no, is no can... consent, it is a Worse. bigger violation. Totally, totally. Yeah. I completely agree. But what I, I guess what I'm suggesting is that I couldn't find it really more specific uh, information about the rape allegations yeah. that were in California, and it it could have been uh, someone's daughter's parents yeah. alleging rape. Mm-hmm. True. In yeah. which case, the potential is there that it was another case of statutory rape. Yeah. Right. It doesn't True. matter. No, I just don't think it's her because they would have just mentioned it was her. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. Anywho. Um. Yes, so when he was arrested, Mary uh, decided to head to Soquel, California to stay with her uncle, who she periodically stayed with because it was a safe place for her to stay that wasn't with her parents, who she didn't get along with. They fought a lot, as you do with teenagers. Yeah, teenagers are terrible. Can't wait. On September 29th, she left her uncle's place to hitchhike the 380 miles to Corona, California, where her grandfather lived. So she was going to stay with him for however long. I mean, she she wasn't exactly a planner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so she had stayed with her uncle for a while and then was going to see her grandfather. Uh, while she was standing with two other hitchhikers near Berkeley, California, a blue van pulled up. The driver said that he only had enough room for her, even though the van was completely empty except for one bag. She was exhausted and just wanted to get to her grandfather's home, so she ignored the warnings from the two other hitchhikers and hopped in. Uh, if, yeah. If I've learned anything from all these stories I've heard from this, from what we've gone through in other mm-hmm. podcasts, don't. If you got a gut feeling and someone says don't, just don't do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Don't hitchhike. Well, Trust hitchhiking your gut. Was don't then. ever go on a cruise. <laughs> don't go on a cruise. I want to go on a cruise. I've been on a cruise. I want to go on a cruise. Hitchhiking is not as dangerous as they say. You just got to use your brain. If someone pulls up and you get it's a bad feeling. It's not as dangerous for a large bearded No, no in fellow. general. They've actually proven hey, that it's now. actually not as dangerous as they say it is. But when someone pulls up willing to pick you up, look at them. And if you get a bad feeling... Just walk away. For example, yeah. like a whole van with one bag, and there's three of you, and he can only take you specifically. Yeah. The other hitchhikers tried to tell her not to go, and she was so exhausted. But would you get in a van with this guy? No. No, probably not. No. Not even me. He. I'm showing uh, Mike and Nina a picture of this. Which will guy be on the website. Driving. Yeah, which is will be on the website. Not trustworthy looking. No. Photo. Because he has a cul-de-sac head. 
if he had a full He's head of hair. Hey, come on now. I trust cul-de-sac. Captain Picard. So I've only... never heard that before. Yeah, because it's a cul-de-sac, yeah. so there's like no hair here and just hair. Here. I love it. Uh, <laughs> he, can I see the picture again? He's got like I a mean, partial cul de sac. He, he, he could make I it think a... he's got more like a really bad widow's peak, doesn't he? Yeah, because he has this What's weird a... island yeah, no. hair. But he's you got see the... in the in the picture in the left spots here, so it's like yeah. it's almost it's like a no turn cul de sac, like a dead. End. I don't know. I don't <laughs> like it. He's got a cul de sac that still has like the grass median in the middle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Where it's the yeah. community garden. Yeah, it's the community garden <laughs> right here in the middle. Yeah. We, All have, right. we have those in East Van. <laughs> totally. God. Back to this asshole. Yeah. Okay. Called a sack killer. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The driver was Lawrence Bernard Singleton. Uh, he went by Larry. He was born July 28th, 1927, a middle aged, overweight merchant seaman. So he was decent enough when he was sober, but a real piece of crap when he drank. Which was often and to great excess. Yeah, I, I understand addiction and everything. Like, I get that people are addicted. But if you know that you're a societal piece of shit when you drink... Maybe That's you alcoholism. Just, I know, but, like, I understand that you have a problem, you have an addiction, It's and it's hard not to. But maybe just wait for it. You'll see the length that he goes yeah. to get more drink like he knows what's gonna happen he knows where that's gonna lead and he does it anyway yeah yeah okay so he had previously been convicted of contributing to the delinquency of a minor he divorced his first wife shirley in 1971 and he frequently fought with their daughter deborah he went on to wed mary collins in 1976 and that second marriage ended just two years later uh, but they remained friends. Well, that's good. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, you're joking. But am- amicable divorce is better than oh no, it definitely is. Divorce, yeah, right. I don't know what that's like, but yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely uh, some divorce in my family, mm-hmm. and it's not amicable. Larry convinced Mary to get into the van by saying that he had a daughter that was about her age. He also said he was heading to Reno, but would make a detour to Los Angeles to drop her off. This would make his original drive of 3.5 hours a whopping 14 hours. Oh, snap. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know maps well, but I'm like, that's that's not a a simple detour. (laughs) No, 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 no. That's not a detour. That's a road trip, yeah. It seems incredibly unlikely that he would actually agree to this with no ulterior motive. Sadly, his ulterior motive became apparent very quickly his unwanted advances started shortly after the trip began mary had lit up a cigarette which made her sneeze and he said quote this is a a quote from what mary told the police later quote oh let me see if you are sick and he reached for her neck but she jerked away and settled against the door out of his reach larry said that he needed to Stop by his house near San Francisco to pick up his laundry, and Mary naively agreed to help him carry it to the van. Once they were back in the van, Larry started drinking liquor from milk carton he had picked up while they had stopped. Uh, why is there liquor in a milk carton? Well, that's what I was mentioning earlier, is that, like, when they stopped at his house, he just, like, dumped a bunch of liquor into the first like drinking yeah. receptacle that he found i guess if you're going to be a terrible drunk you're not going to get stopped by the cops if you're drinking out of a milk jug they'll just be confused if i was a cop and i pulled someone over and they had like a, a milk gallon carton, of milk yeah i'd be like the fuck well i don't think you'd really care there's, about there's the milk two carton. things you in that the milk booze. carton it's either full of liquor or pee because you couldn't be bothered or to milk. stop. <laughs> or milk. There's three. Who's drinking a bunch of milk? Some people are crazy. In California, like in the heat. Yeah. Well, they got air conditioning. In, or what year was this again? 70 something. No air conditioning. Yeah, probably not milk. Yeah. Actually, there's some American milk that doesn't have to be refrigerated. So. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like the hell? bag milk. Hey. Hey, now. That's coming back, actually, I hear. I don't know. I was never alive for when it was a thing. It's it's <laughs> yeah, that's farts. how you get milk in Ontario. Yeah, it's then you get milk from a cow. Hmm? Like a cow just yeah. with the teat right into the mouth. Utter. Mm, no, 
Yes, yeah, so Larry started drinking liquor directly from this milk carton in the van, and uh, Mary quickly fell asleep. When she woke up, she realized that they were driving east when they should have been heading west. She found a sharp stick in the van and pointing it at him, she told him that he was going the wrong way and she knew that he knew it. He tried to say that it was just a mistake and he would turn right around. He just had to stop and relieve himself first. So Interesting. Just, yeah, just an innocent mistake. Okay. Literally heading the opposite direction. Yeah. Not sure how you would do that, but okay, whatever. Like, oh, it's re- really weird. The um, signs for... Los Angeles are getting larger instead of smaller. Okay. (laughs) I mean, if you shit-face drinking out of a milk jug, it'd be like, I don't know which way I'm driving. Am I even on the road? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's actually just surprising he's still on the road. I'm surprised she just fell asleep. I'd be like, I think I need to get out of the car now. You're drinking booze out of a milk carton, but... Yeah, so at at the point that he had picked her up, she'd already been hitchhiking for days, so she'd been basically awake for days. Right. And... Yeah. Just tired, yeah. Just exhausted. She just wanted to get there. So the the sun had just set when they pulled off the freeway onto a deserted road down a canyon. Mary got out of the van on the other side of the road from where Larry was to relieve herself as well. She finished and was tying her shoes when she felt a horrible pain across her back. She soon felt a similar blow to the back of her head. He tore open her white blouse and pulled her hair, forcing her mouth onto his penis. I can't repeat what he said to her because it's fucking horrible, but you get the idea. Yep, I do. Larry threw her into the back of the van with one hand and told her he would kill her if she screamed. It only took seconds for him to get her hands tied behind her back. He sexually assaulted her and then climbed back into the driver's seat. He drove a few miles further into the canyon, completely naked. He stopped again and cut her hands loose. He forced her to drink a cup of liquor. He raped and sodomized her numerous times throughout the night and continued to force her to drink more liquor. Mary was in agony and kept begging to be set free. She even told him that she wouldn't tell anyone what he had done, and she soon passed out. She was exhausted and in agony. When she awoke, they were back by the road. He told her to get out and lay on the edge of the road. He went back to the van and was searching for something in the back. When he came back, he was holding a hatchet. He grabbed her left hand and said, quote, You want to be free? I'll set you free. He severed her left arm just below the elbow. He swung repeatedly at her right arm while she screamed and kicked at him. Fuck. This is a quote from Mary Vincent. I felt all the pain, the sharpness, the burning, and the blood was leaking out of my body. I felt the hot ooze just flowing out of me. I felt everything. I was aware of everything. Mar- yeah, there's no, no amount of booze that'll stop that. No. Mary went limp. Larry finally stopped. He then threw her body down the 30-foot embankment into a concrete culvert. He left her there to die alone in the desert. What Larry the asshole didn't know was that Mary was still conscious, still fighting for life. To slow the bleeding, she rolled her elbows in the dirt to coat the wounds. She followed the sound of traffic up the dark cliff and back to the freeway, all while completely naked and doing her best to keep her arms above her heart to prevent the loss of blood or even of the muscle tissue falling out. She reached the highway and was relieved when a red convertible with two men pulled up but when they saw her screaming for help, they quickly sped off. What assholes. What? Garbage people. Not long after, two people who were on holiday but had gotten lost pulled up and quickly wrapped her in towels. They sped her to the nearby airport and called for an ambulance. The first thing she said was that she had been raped. She gave an exceptional description to the police, and when the sketch was released, a woman easily recognized her neighbor and longtime friend... Larry Singleton. Fuck. She went straight to the police. Good for her because so many people don't turn their friends in. Mm -hmm. And they need to. They're just like, no, it couldn't be him. Yeah. He's such a good neighbor. No, he's a piece of trash. Yeah. Mary's arms were eventually found near the Golden Gate Bridge. Unfortunately, it was too long after being chopped off. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah. Uh, So they couldn't reconnect them and she was fitted with prosthetics. 
But that actually got me to wondering how frequently they find actual body parts there. Like those feet they kept washing ashore here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's um, one recently, actually. Mm-hmm. So I tried looking it up because my search history is completely fucked up anyway. So <laughs> Same. Red ever. Yeah. At this point, I find laptops confiscated. And We're probably already on a watch list because of this podcast. Like a crazy person. <laughs> it's my work computer, too. <laughs> so I didn't actually find an answer, but I did find a really sad statistic, and that was that uh, from 1937 to 2012, 1,600 bodies were recovered of people who had jumped from the Golden oh, Gate Bridge. Oh, man. That's really sad. Yeah. It's, uh, it's over 21 a year. Yeah. So it's basically it's every two and a half yeah. weeks. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's sad, too, because... You know, even if you survive the fall from that bridge... Which is almost the, impossible. Yeah, that water there is rushes so fast that it, it's almost impossible to live regardless. That's why they put Alcatraz out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's because there's, <laughs> there's just no chance. Have you... No. There's a documentary. I'll find what the name is of it, but it's about... It's the bridge. The bridge. Yeah. And there was this guy who did survive. Mm-hmm. And, like, this newfound, like, life yeah. and all that. And it yeah. was it's crazy to see... Um, him just hear him speak about it. How after he jumped, he's like, I don't actually want to die. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, how many of these people are? As yeah, because it they wasn't. Jump, it wasn't after he'd survived. It was as soon as he jumped. Yeah, yeah. he was like, Oh my god, I shouldn't have done this. And that like what? And it's only four seconds from jump. Or was it four seconds? It doesn't matter. Under ten, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, insane, completely. Yeah, I didn't get too much into it because it's off point, but also Mm -hmm. I don't know that it, I mean, maybe we'll talk about it later. It might be something we talk about later. Anyway, when Larry Singleton was arrested, he insisted that Mary Vincent was, quote, a $10 a night whore. Okay, well, A, that's a fucking lie. And B, even if she was a sex worker, that's no excuse for what he did. She was under the age of consent, so regardless. But I, I think yeah. that's even like besides the point. Yeah. Like, but okay. I mean, just it just adds to it, right? Yeah, yeah. If he's trying to claim she's a sex worker, she can't be legally because she's under the age of consent. Mm-hmm. Period. But even if she, I don't even know if it was legal at that point, but like, okay, she's a bad sex worker, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Why did you chop her hands off and leave her naked? In yeah, the ditch? it doesn't fucking yeah. matter. Well, just it just adds to it, right? He's right. trying to claim this, but she can't be. Yeah, deflecting. And so yeah. the, and it's like, oh, maybe he didn't know how old she was. She. I the pic I have we'll have pictures on the website. She does not look like an adult. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter how old she was. I don't care if she was a sixty year old. What there is no excuse for what he did. Oh no, no. Period. No. She's a person. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is it's even worse because he's trying to claim yeah. that she's no, this I, and she's fucking. It's, complete, it's yeah. completely irre- irrelevant yeah. of what Yeah. Okay, so he also claimed that the two of them were not the only ones in the van and that he was framed by the two hitchhikers that were with Mary. So what he was saying was those two hitchhikers that were with her when he picked her up, that he had picked all of them up and that it, they together had worked out a plan to frame him oh, for course, this crime. And Yes, I'm going to frame and he you never... by chopping my own arms off, rubbing them in the dirt and running down a highway naked. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Sounds like fun. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not. Exactly. He also offered no further information about that, like what they looked like or like their ages. And it's like these people that were in his van, there was no physical proof that there was anyone else in his van. And I mean, I don't have to tell you. He's full of shit. Yeah. And I mean, he's just one of those people where he goes through life and fucking nothing's his fault. Anyway. Woe is me. Mm Mm-hmm. Less than a year after uh, this horrific crime, Lawrence Singleton was brought to trial for kidnapping, mayhem, attempted murder, forcible rape, sodomy, and forced oral copulation. Mary Vincent was there to testify against him. He was convicted on all counts. While she was leaving the court that day, she had to walk right past him. And he told her that he would finish the job if it was the last thing that he did. Larry Singleton received the maximum sentence. The sentence should have been 
that he would be released the day after she got her original hands back. The day after she could actually sleep through the night without screaming in fear. The day after she didn't have the horrific memories of every minute of that night seared into her brain. But it wasn't. What he actually received was a whopping 14 years. Fuck that. Absolutely fuck that. It's a fucking joke. Okay. Yeah. Mary should, be, should have been 14 years per finger. Yeah. Never well, getting Well, hopefully out. as a as a child rapist and all that, maybe, fingers crossed, the story turns that someone took care of him in jail. Mm. Mm. Don't hold your breath on that. Damn it. <sighs> okay. Mary was terrified. She was living in an almost constant state of fear. It had very detrimental effects on her health, mental well-being, as well as her relationship with friends and family. Her parents had put her in a school for people with special needs, and she started to see a therapist. She continued to act out by being wild. Her father, Herb, began collecting guns and talking about killing Larry. He began to fight with his wife, Lucy, and they eventually broke up. Herb moved to Alaska. Initially, Mary stayed with her mother in Las Vegas, but eventually she left too. She moved to Washington State, and in 1987, she got married. She was still very afraid and for a time was too scared to leave her home. As it turns out, her fears weren't completely unfounded. While he was in jail, Larry had been such a model prisoner that they re- decided to release him a little early. Fucking hell. It's <sighs> bullshit. Six years early. Yep, that's right. I think the dad needs to leave Alaska. Like, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he'd be in jail, but... He served eight years for what he'd done to her. The stress of his release, amongst other issues, led to Mary getting divorced after only three years. She and her two sons moved to a small town near Tacoma, but Mary was still having difficulties keeping everything together. No shock at no, all. No, no, no. They left the area to move to sunny Orange County. Mary got a job at the Orange County District Attorney's Office, and her life finally began to stabilize. I feel so bad that her marriage broke up because of it, because there was no fault to either her husband, it sounds like. It was just no the stress of this awful, awful experience when she was younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and while I was doing the research, like she specifically mentioned that the father of her sons is an amazing man, but they just couldn't make it work yeah. through everything that she was going through. Oh, it's it understandable. I mean, couldn't happen. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't be broken from what happened to her? Mm-hmm. And to have the person who did it get out that early, it's going to destroy anyone. Um, But I think it's like the daily reminder as well, right? Like if you can mentally not think about it every waking second, if you're looking down or whatever, you're functioning, trying to do anything. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I think it's so much more than just getting over it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, Larry Singleton was going through a much deserved special kind of hell. There was a huge public outcry after he was released Every city that he tried to move to in California wouldn't take him, and he ended up having to serve out his parole in a trailer on the San Quentin grounds. That's awesome. I yeah. love it. And Might as well still be in prison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't understand, like... Was he registered uh, as a sex offender? Was that a thing back then? It wasn't. Mm-mm. Fuck. So, but I don't, I don't fucking get it. Like, you come up for parole... If I'm not listening to anything that you say, like, I don't I don't give a rat's ass what you say. I'm looking at the facts of yeah. the crime. I'm looking at a girl, not oh, not a woman, a yeah. girl that you you cut her arms off. Yeah. I, I would be like, 14 years isn't enough for you. No. Nope. If there was some way for me to add more time to your sentence, I fucking would. Because yeah. you're a piece of garbage. Like I said, 14 years per finger. Times 10. Anyway, so it wasn't even like a backlash for these other communities. He had to have, when he did initially, because he had to try to move into these communities, yep. he had to have police presence outside his house because he was receiving death threats every day. Oh, darn. Yeah. yeah. Well deserved. Don't waste their so, police dollars on that. I was exactly. Just say, so you're spending even more money. Well, if he's such a. If society is such a threat to him, why is he out? If general public can see that he shouldn't be out 
in society, yeah. why can't people whose job it is to make that decision see that? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, he, he was a special, like, he helped teach these other inmates. And I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't care. Give He's him a little more food at the garbage. friggin' dinner time or something, but don't let him out. Oh, I mean, you saw his picture. He didn't need more food. <laughs> anyway. Hey, now, we all need more food. <laughs> okay, so he lived in a trailer on San Quentin grounds, and he joined Alcoholics Anonymous, and he claimed that he was done drinking. But because of this... Huge public outcry. California actually changed its laws. So had Larry been convicted of the same crimes today that he was actually convicted of, he would have received 31 years in jail instead of 14. Still not that, enough. But exactly. It's better. Not even close. It's better. Still not enough. And even if he had have received 31 years, it wouldn't have been enough even at the time to comfort Mary. Like... She remained in hiding throughout his entire sentence and his parole. Yeah. Once his parole ended, Larry decided to move back to his home state, Florida. Of course. Of course it was Florida. Poor Florida. What the hell, Florida? (laughs) So he was arrested in 1990 for petty theft and he was sentenced to two years. And again, he didn't serve his full sentence. Of course not. He also spent some time in a psych ward for attempting suicide. Don't feel sorry for him. Whatever. Piece of garbage. Why only attempt? He's a piece of garbage. In 1997, he lured Roxanne Hayes to his home. Roxanne was a mother of three who had sadly turned to prostitution to make ends meet. I was surprised how many articles just referred to her as a prostitute and not as a woman. And it was like, what the... Or at like, least as a sex worker, but yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, the articles I found were, were in the yeah. late 90s, right. so it was... It wasn't a term well, yet. Yeah, which is why I used the term yeah, prostitute no, for sure, and yeah. not sex worker. But it doesn't fucking matter if she was a prostitute or not. Okay, she was a woman, and once again, what he did to her was horrendous. So once he had her in his apartment, he attacked her, and the attack was so loud and so vicious that numerous neighbors called the police. And when the police arrived, Larry answered the door covered in blood, nearly naked except for a t-shirt and a condom. That's the thought of it made gross. me vomit a little bit in my mouth. It's like, of all the things he's doing, he has time to put a condom on. Right. <laughs> mm. You wouldn't think he'd be worried about that, truthfully. I guess he's trying to be, quote unquote, sophisticated, but he's, he's trying to be pretty safe. Hard. Okay, safe, safety first. Yeah, well, safe for him, not for her. Not with all the blood on him. Yeah, where where the blood come from? He had stabbed her in the torso over fifty times. He was brought to trial in nineteen ninety eight, and guess who was at the penalty trial? Mary fucking Vincent. While on the stand, she pointed to Larry Singleton with her prosthetic arm and said, quote, I was raped, and I had my hands cut off. He used a hatchet, and he left me to die. Singleton was 70 at the time and had no reaction to her testimony whatsoever. He, he was sentenced to death. Good. And I hate the death penalty, but it's better than 14 years. Mm-hmm. And out in eight. Like, if that had been a better sentence and all of that, like this other woman... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. While he was in prison, Larry searched his conscience and realized that there was no way he was guilty of the crime against Mary. So he decided to do what any piece of trash would do. He sued her. <laughs> what? All of a sudden, he'd remembered that Mary had threatened him with a stick and accused him of rape. His lawsuit never went anywhere, but Mary didn't feel safe. <laughs> She pointed a stick at me, so I cut off her arms and raped her and left her in a ditch. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But Mary wasn't the only one that was afraid of Larry. Larry's daughter, Deborah, had lived in fear for years. After her father was arrested, she moved in with a neighbor that had agreed to take care of her. Deborah lived with her from the age of about 15 and a half to 18, and she discouraged Deborah from ending the relationship with her father. Deborah now wonders if she had done this out of fear. When Deborah turned 20, she wrote a letter to Larry to tell him that she was terminating their relationship. 
At 21, she graduated from college, legally changed her last name, and moved from Nevada to California. She soon moved back to Nevada to marry her boyfriend, with whom she later moved on to an undisclosed state. When Larry was serving his sentence for the crimes against Mary Vincent, Deborah asked California prison personnel to keep him in longer as she was afraid what would happen if he was released. Their only suggestion was to get a restraining order against him. Because that works. Because that does anything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by this point in her life, Deborah had moved out of the state three times, changed her name twice to stay away from him, and their bullshit suggestion was to provide him with a piece of paper that had her new name, new address on it, and it said, do not come within 300 feet of her. Yeah, like that's going to fucking happen. As if he gives a shit yeah. about a restraining order. After what he did to Mary, they should have kept him locked up. If they had, Roxanne Hayes' life wouldn't have come to such a horrible end. Yeah. Right? Just like you said, Nina. In 2001, Larry died in jail while awaiting his death sentence. Ugh, but no, because he, sh- he still died. Sh- he still died. He yeah. should die well, at the hands of the law. Finally, cancer did something good. Good riddance. More importantly, Mary Vincent had gotten a good job, gotten remarried, raising her sons in a stable home. She'd started the Mary Vincent Foundation to help victims of traumatic crime, particularly children, with medical and other expenses. Mary's now in her 50s, and it's still not easy. Quote, I've broken bones thanks to my nightmares. I've jumped up and dislocated my shoulder. Just trying to get out of bed, I've cracked ribs and smashed my nose. Oh, my God. That is so sad. No one should have to live in that kind of fear. Mm -hmm. No one. This was in an interview that she did uh, in 2017. So, like, just two years ago. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, she also has her art now as a kind of therapy, and some of her work has been valued at $2,000. Hey, not bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not bad at all. So, she's fucking amazing. Yeah. Obviously. She's killing it. So just wanted to lighten it up a little bit at the end because this level of darkness is usually uh, reserved for Mike's stories. (laughs) But one last thing that I had to mention was when I was doing my research, I found this amazing picture that someone had done. And it's just it's really just a grouping of two pictures of Larry Singleton and the fucking ugliest dog I've ever (laughs) seen in my life. And it looks just like him. It's amazing. It'll be on the website. <laughs> show us. Yeah, it's, it'll I be on the wait. website, but I'm going to show Mike and Nina now. Oh, God. <laughs> Poor dog. The dog has more hair. <laughs> the dog has more hair than he does. It's, not it's, a like, good thing. it's, it's horrible. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's horrible. He looks so different. Yeah. yeah. Um, he should have just committed to the bald head once he started called the sacking. Yeah, so yeah. this picture look. was like near the end. So this would have been in the late 90s insane mm-hmm. yeah he looks even more insane there mm-hmm. yeah so yeah you can see the asshole versus dog picture on the website as well but yeah that's my story so the end of it is that mary vincent is fucking amazing larry singleton's a piece of shit and the justice system totally failed her big surprise so sad yeah mm-hmm. it is all right well this is the time when usually I would tell my story. Mm-hmm. But we're going to cut this here, and you're going to get my story next episode. I'll give a, a little hint. It's going to take place in Toronto, Canada. And uh, hopefully you are ready for that episode when it comes out mm-hmm. in a couple more weeks. It's on the same theme, but we're just Yeah, we're still this never meant, it's just part two. My story had a lot of information, and it went really long. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take its own episode up. So hopefully you enjoy that. Yay. 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 Until next time. Well, it just I'll say to you, you can find us at uh, Brew Crime on Twitter, at Brew Crime on Facebook, or go to our Facebook group. It's uh, facebook.com slash group slash Brew Crime. You can find us on Instagram at Pacific Beer Chat. You can find us at Brew Crime at PacificBeerChat.com. If you want to email us or send us any suggestions for uh, episodes. You can find us at brewcrime.threadless.com to purchase any of our merchandise. Mm -hmm. Or just go to brewcrime.com. Thanks for listening. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Brew Crime's intro was created by Mike using Creative Commons Attribution Licensed Audio from purple-planet.com, soundbible.com, and freesoundeffects.com. Logo design was by Ben Greenberg. All cases and stories were written by Beck, Nina, and Mike, and our sources are put into the show notes for each episode. We always want to give credit to the people that research the cases we talk about. Check out our store at brewcrime.threadless.com where you can purchase swag like t-shirts, phone cases, beach towels, and all kinds of cool stuff. We can also be found on your favorite podcast apps, our hosts, Spreaker.com or BrewCrime.com, as well as at BrewCrime on Twitter, at BrewCrime on Facebook, at Facebook.com slash groups slash BrewCrime. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Pacific Beer Chat. BrewCrime is part of the Hopped Up Network. Here is a sample of one of the podcasts you can check out by going to HoppedUpNetwork.com. On the Pints and Provisions podcast, we discuss the ins and outs of beer, brewing, and breweries in addition to all those crafts that pair well with beer, such as bourbon, coffee, food, and cooking. Join Evan, Ryan, Mark, and Dan on each episode where we discuss those crafts we love to imbibe. Here's a clip. I don't. I, I've got four full glasses over here. I need to figure out my glass situation <laughs> and, and before and you're, I pour this. You're the one that asking you for more glasses. Yeah, he was. He was <laughs> the one next? that said, "What's next?" Well, there's a bunch sitting out. I thought maybe. Uh, I thought. I, I thought we were going to get those going, but we are proud members of the Hopped Up Network, where you can find all our episodes, and also look for us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean.com, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Cheers. Now, here is a promo from a fellow true crime or spooky podcast that we really enjoy. Hope you'll take a listen. Norway reeling from twin attacks. First, a suspected car bomb. Thomas Quick was known as Sweden's worst serial killer. Quick was convicted. Kim Vahl disappeared after boarding Madsen's submarine in Copenhagen Harbor last August. Terrorism. Miscarriages of justice. Serial killers, disappearances, from the known to the lesser known, we give you true crime from the dark and frozen regions of Northern Europe. This is Nordic True Crime. Subscribe to our bi-weekly episodes on iTunes, Spotify or on your podcast provider. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Nordic True Crime. She was detained as the police searched her home, and they found. In some instances, she wrote the same entry in more than once, but in the day. Wow, that's a horrible sentence. <laughs> District. I'm going to do that one again because I don't know if I said that right. Just own it if you didn't. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> Just own it if you didn't. <laughs> Pretend you got it right. Okay. No. <laughs> I, f- I feel like my, the Serb in me is yeah. like, I can do the Slavic language thing. Yeah, like, I was going to say, if any of us are going to get it right, it's going to be it's neat. Gonna be neat or you should do it obviously wrong just yeah. because. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Out of principle, screw Russians. No. <laughs> Save that for the end. Just, just joking. Don't kill me. Okay. This entry does lead to a discarded to- torso. Torso. <laughs> Remix. <laughs> I'm just going to, let's just go with that. Okay. But from someone knows. <laughs> I'm literally going to pick the next story to just have like the whitest, simplest names. <laughs> I don't know why I'm even trying right now. Okay. But from Samsonova's diary, she mentions a tattoo on the body of old Vodo. <laughs> <laughs> Police have not revealed evidence to directly support allegations of cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, all I need is a kitchen knife and some sleeping pills. I'll take mm-hmm. you guys out. I'm not eating any food you prepare. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I fucking cook. Trust me. I would not poison anyone. If I'm cooking, you know it's fucked. Like <laughs> You're already being poisoned? <laughs> no, like something sketchy. Yeah. Or I need yeah. something. Undercooked chicken or... Oh, yeah. Mm, salmonella <laughs> all around. I'm waiting for you to be quiet, you... Assholes. Sorry, serious face. Yeah. You can always start back a little bit and I can just cut what that. I need to cut out. Rewind. Wicka, wicka. I'm just going to start.
I feel bad sometimes if there's something I notice and I'm like, no, no, oh, always tell asshole. me right away. Well, the so 40 minutes weird. at the end, I was like, okay, well, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I don't know what happened there because it wasn't <laughs> there when I saved because I checked mm-hmm. and then it was there. So I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, totally. But I just burned 500 megabytes of my data and done. It clearly shows that at least one of us is listening to our own stuff. It's good. It's good. Yeah. There's actually You're the two. best, Nina. Thank you. I'm putting it at the end. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, as it turns out, it's been Nina listening to our stories 1,000 times. Oh. That's where all our numbers How do you guys think I do work at work? Yeah. Yeah. I got to just re-listen to this and relive all these moments. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Perfect. Merchant Seaman. He was decent enough when he was... (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you guys. I knew I should have paused after saying seaman. (laughs) The lesbian said seaman. I didn't even say I'm just just kidding. I'm just just kidding. Just the word seaman. No, it was just the word (laughs) seaman. Okay. I'm just, I just regressed to like 10 years old there. Oh, okay. No. That's such a lazy eye contact. Are we both going to be kids? <laughs> I knew I should have paused. I knew I should have paused. <laughs> oh, but there's no cannibalism, so. That's okay. Okay. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So- Onward, Christian soldier. God damn it. <laughs> I was going to say noble steed. But <laughs> Onward, noble steed. <laughs> okay. I'm going to okay. keep that part. <laughs> I've had literally three sips of beer and I'm like at my best right now. Yeah. Larry convinced Mary to get into the van by saying that he had da da No. da 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 Larry con- It's the <laughs> fucking... Everybody's... There's three people in this story with the name Mary. Yeah. And it's Larry and Mary. I'm reading Larry and Mary the whole fucking time. La Mary. Okay. That's better than... What were your names in your story? <laughs> yeah. My laptop's close. I don't. I don't. I don't look back. Fucking Russian names, Boris. Okay. And not a single one was named Boris. <laughs> what do we know? Mm. Hmm. While she was leaving co- the court that day, he had. To... While she was. Oh, fuck. <laughs> At twenty-one, she graduated from college. <laughs> college. College. At... You're just gonna sound like wine and crime. Yeah. <laughs> They've got serious. They, yeah, they, they're I've, my favorite. I've, I've they cheerlead too much them. a little bit. I love them, but they do cheerlead a little too much for the criminal. <laughs> but do they? Oh, I yeah. Feel, sometimes. I think sometimes. Not for the big ones, though. Like, the, they were just talking. They just, blah. They were just talking about the new, like, the Ted Bundy tapes yeah. and yeah. the Ted Bundy movie. I heard that, yeah, yeah. And they're <sighs> like. see the movie? I want to yeah. see the movie. But yeah. the, um, I've been watching Ted Bundy tapes. And I'm just like. Yeah, boring. The Ted Bundy tapes, I was like, he was fine. But it's just, all I stuff haven't I've finished seen. yet. It's, it's all just, stuff I've seen already. Yeah. Something that is like, they don't talk about the victims at all. Like, like get a little bit out of there. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's a, it's about these tapes, right? Yeah. yeah. But still, they should have. But anyway, on Wine and Crime, they were talking about it, but they were also like, he's a piece of shit. I don't know why people think he's attractive, except for the only, what, um,. Amanda's excited for the movie because she loves Zac Efron. Okay. Mm. So she's excited to see him. No. And I, I'm he, like, ew. Looking at his pictures, he's not a super ugly guy or anything. Like He has a unibrow. Am I the only one? So do I. Have but I, 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 think, I think the issue with him specifically is that, A, it was the first televised scene like that. B, he was better than the average looking person at that time. Right, so Abe, when you suspect a serial killer and a mass murderer well, like that, you're also not checking out men usually. So no, but I can <laughs> when <laughs> men are he attractive. Has a unibrow, I can but see a unibrow it. is something you can fix if you like, nurture him properly. Don't, I, don't you get know? me wrong. Like, oh yeah, you gotta change the guys. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pluck your unibrow. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna change you know your um, humorous. I'm not saying he's that's a, what like, matters. What the unibrow? No, yeah, there must what be matters two. is that the person yeah. is yeah. not a. Yeah. Douchebag. Unibrow, you can fix. I get that, but he's also <laughs> just did that like a shot. This class I, is dangerous. I hated. I hate. I wish we were recording all this. It's being recorded. So. Is it? I hate. I hate that scene in Ted Bundy tapes where the judge is like, "Oh, it's such a waste." At the end, uh, uh, I really would have liked to see you argue in my court. Are practice. we watching the same case? Yeah. He didn't make any good points. Like, he's just he's just a white male. It, yeah. I yeah. But I think I think it's what people's perception was of what a serial killer is, right? Like you're seeing these butchered bodies, they're bitten, they're 
brutalized, raped, assaulted. When you think of that, you think of like a a werewolf type man, like a oh, a yeah. terrifying like an animal, like a, a hilly billy animal. I don't, I don't know. Hilly billy sounds hillbilly. cute. Um, but you're thinking of something, a savage beast, mm-hmm. not someone who can speak. He can speak. I mean, does he sound rational or sane? Mm-hmm. No. I mean, one of the things in the tapes that you, I'm sure obviously you've seen was, you know, his conditions in the light, the cell. Mm-hmm. What does that have to do with anything that we're here talking about, what you're accused of? However, he can articulate and the funny things he would say, people are sitting in the audience are like chuckling and laughing. It's like some of these women, I'm like, do you not realize <sighs> what he did? Yeah. And what... I mean, not to give it away, or you finished watching it, right, Mike? Don't worry about it, because I know enough about the story yeah. already. Mm-hmm. I mean, when he was then tried just for the 11-year-old girl that he murdered oh, in the second trial, sakes. there's still people who are laughing. It's like, hold on, he already has two death penalties. Like, he is guilty. He is mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. serial killer. You guys are still laughing and just, like, giggling. Oh, he's dying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd just be like, fuck you, buddy. Nothing you say is funny or intelligent or yeah. anything. That was a child. But I'm curious if you would feel the same back in that time without knowing everything we know. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Everything, it was different then, right? right? Like, to me, the whole, like, it was mind-boggling that people from, like, literally, like, city to city, town to town, didn't know what was going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I feel like now, here, someone farts in Africa, I know about it already, right? Like, (laughs) okay, but you know what I mean? Like, right? Like, it's it's a thing. So, (laughs) yeah, it's a bad example, but, like... Right? I don't know. Anyways. You know what I mean, though, right? Like, the only thing that I did get out of Ted Bundy tapes was I I don't remember hearing about his escape before. No, I didn't. Of all the things I've seen, I I don't remember hearing about that. Well, that was the crazy thing, too, because with the second escape, because he did it twice, Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. second one, the shaft he got through, it was incredible, because they're looking at it, they didn't have a single other person that could even fit through it, but because Mm -hmm. of how much he starved himself... I'm pretty into these serial yeah. killers. Yeah. I All mean, right. Well, yeah, maybe we'll here. cover him one time, but we'll just throw us at the end of the episode for now. Mm-hmm. I, I think we should definitely not cover him anytime soon, though, because the tapes just came out. So yeah, it's yeah. So and fresh. the movie's coming out, too. So, yeah. Well, in like a year. Well, just whatever but, it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. But Zac Efron, what a babe. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're going to give him a unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> it must. It must to make it real. Like, I've seen the trailer for the movie, and um, like, he looks like Ted Bundy. Mm-hmm. But Ted Bundy was never that fit. I don't understand. Well, you're not going to. They found a good actor that wanted to do it. Period. But he doesn't look that fit in the recordings and stuff. Like I've seen some of the courtroom scenes where he has the uh, the white shirt and the mm. blue and the bow tie. It looks pretty, pretty fucking good. Yeah. yeah. I watched the Ted Bundy tapes and then I watched a trailer for the movie. And oh. it was interesting to see um, how Hollywood the movie was you know mm, what yeah. i mean especially when you see scene for scene uh what actually happened and how the movie yeah. portrays it it was interesting 